welcome to this session. Now, we will be um, uh, solving the problem that uh, three generalized three dimensional problem that we are, that we are solving, we have, we have taken up in the last class, we will be completing it. We, we have already solved completely the, uh, the uh, sub problem theta 1, in the sub problem theta 2, we have completely solved the um, steady state part, which is nothing but an elliptical partial differential equation. Then let us look into the time varying part. If you look into the solution of the time varying part, it will be having a non-zero initial condition and the rest boundary conditions are all, all homogeneous and Dirichlet. So, therefore, um, we, we, all, we have already solved this type of problem in the first sub problem and I will be directly writing the solution of that. So, theta 2 tau will be nothing but summation of m summation over n c m n exponential minus lambda m n square tau sin n pi x sin m pi y and uh, mm, uh, that uh, tau is equal to 0, we have the initial condition th theta tau will be nothing but minus theta 2 s, which will be the solution of the steady state part. So, we, we uh, put it put it there. So, this becomes minus theta 2 s is equal to summation over m summation over n c m n sin n pi x sin m pi y and we will be evaluating the, uh, uh, the, the constant C m n by using the orthogonal property of the sine function and the uh, Eigen functions that we have done already before that uh, what is the solution of theta 2 s, theta 2 s is minus 2 theta 1 naught n is equal to 1 to infinity 1 minus cosine n pi divided by n pi sin hyperbolic k n pi x divided by sin hyperbolic k n pi sin n pi y. So, that was the solution of the steady state part that should be equal to double summation 1 over m another over n c m n sin n pi x and sin m pi y. So, we multiply both side by sin m pi x and sin n pi y dx dy and integrate after opening the summation series only one term will survive in the right hand side and uh, mm, that will be uh, uh, and the other will be uh, lost will be gone. So, it will be minus 2 theta 1 naught some function of x and y. So, I write this as some function of x and y is equal to summation m n c m n sin n pi x sin m pi y. So, this will be nothing but minus 2 theta 1 naught double integral over x over y f of x y uh, sin m pi x sin n pi y d x d y on the right hand side we will be getting c m n there will be one uh, uh, si integral sin square n pi x will be half integral uh, integral sin m sin square m pi y d y will be half. So, there will be half up there. So, if we do that then we will be getting an expression of c m n and c m n will be minus 8 theta 1 naught from 0 to 1 integral y is equal to from 0 to 1 f of x y sin m pi x sin n pi y d x d y and uh, the index m was associated with y and index n was associated with, with x in this particular problem. So, we convert them back to n and m our normal variable. So, this becomes 8 theta 1 naught x y uh, f of x y sin n pi x sin m pi y d x d y. 
this will be minus 8 theta 1 not 0 to 1 0 to 1 now let us put uh, f of x y f of x y is nothing but uh, 1 minus cosine n pi divided by n pi sin hyperbolic k n pi x sin hyperbolic k n pi sin n pi y sin n pi x sin m pi y d x d y. So, you will be you will be getting uh, and uh, so this will be giving you a you know uh, some some uh, constant some value. So, it will be you can you can obtain the C m n quite accurately. So, once we will be getting the estimating the C m n similarly the other sub problems which will be having a 0 initial condition and non zero boundary, uh, boundary conditions they can be converted into a steady state part and uh, they could be divided into steady state part and and, uh, and the transient part and that will be we will be able to solve them. So, once we do that then let us uh, so that that completes the problem that we were dealing with. Now, let us go to the uh, other problem. Now, I will be taking a typical problem that we have not talked about earlier. So, this is a, 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 a second a, a two dimensional problem. So, we take up another example let us say a two dimensional problem a parabolic one two dimensional parabolic partial differential equation like del u del t will be is equal to del square u del x square and at t is equal to 0 we have let us say u is equal to u naught and the boundary at x is equal to 0 it is insulated. So, it will be del u del x will be equal to 0 and boundary at x is equal to 1 we have a mixed boundary condition del u del x plus beta u is equal to 0. So, if we remember that in the um, uh, previously we have we have looked into the um, uh, a problem where the both x is equal to 0 and x equal to 1 we have a Dirichlet boundary condition that is the problem of first kind problem of the second kind was at x is equal to 0 del u del x is equal to 0 and uh, x is equal to 1 u is equal to 0 and problem of third kind was at del u um, uh, was at uh, x is equal to 0 u was equal to 0 and del u del x plus beta u will be 0 at x is equal to 1. So, it is a mixed boundary condition that is prevailing at x is equal to 0. Now, this particular problem we have a uh, uh, Neumann boundary condition at x is equal to 0 and a mixed boundary condition at x is equal to 1. So, that we, we have not attempted this problem earlier. So, now let us look into the solution of this particular problem. So, again we will be going ahead with a separation of variable type of solution u is a function of um, uh, function of space and it is a sole function of time. So, if you put it there, so this becomes x d t d t and x and, and t d square x d x s square. Now, if you divide by um, uh, x t and separate out the variable, this becomes 1 over t d t d t is equal to 1 over x d square x d x s square the left hand side is a function of time the right hand side is a function of space they are equal and they will be equal to some constant in order to have a non trivial solution. Now, let us constitute the Eigen value problem in the x direction the Eigen value problem is d square x d x square plus lambda square x is equal to 0 and at x is equal to 0 d x d x is equal to 0 and at x is equal to 1 we have d x d x plus beta x is equal to 0. So, this formulates the standard Eigen value problem in the x direction and let us look into the solution of this. Now, as we all of us know the solution of x varying part will be constituted by sin, sin, combination of sin and cosine function. So, x n is equal to c 1 sin lambda x uh, lambda n x plus c 2 cosine lambda x lambda n x. So, a corresponding to nth eigen value we will be getting this solution. So, now d x n d x 
will be nothing but c 1 lambda cosine lambda n x minus c 2 lambda sin lambda n x and d x n d x evaluated at x is equal to 0, sin 0 is 0. So, the term that will survive is c 1 lambda cosine lambda. Okay. So, that will be equal to 0 at this boundary. So, therefore, lambda n c 1 lambda n cosine lambda n will be equal to 0. So, in order to have a uh, no, 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 so, cosine uh, at, at x equal to 0. So, cos 0 is 1. So, this will be multiplied by 0. So, it will be, will be having cos 0. So, c 1 lambda n will be equal to 0. So, for a non trivial solution um, the lambda n cannot be equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, then we will be landing up with a trivial solution. So, the solution is c 1 is equal to 0. If c 1 is equal to 0, let us say what is the solution of this? Solution is c 2 cosine lambda n x. Now, these are the eigenfunction of this particular problem. Now, let us look into the eigenvalues, how the eigenvalues are obtained. The eigenvalues are obtained by the boundary condition we will be putting at x is equal to 1. So, at x is equal to 1, it should satisfy the original boundary condition boundary condition of the original problem. So, it will be d d x d x plus beta x is equal to 0. If we look into the nth eigen value, so there will be d x n d x plus beta x n will be equal to 0 and x n is equal to this. Let us see what is d x n d x d x n d x will be nothing but minus c 2 lambda n sin lambda n x and at x is equal to 1, this becomes d x n d x is equal to minus c 2 lambda n sin lambda n and x n at x is equal to 1 becomes c 2 cosine lambda n. So, then we will be substituting this into the boundary condition at x is equal to 1 and let us see what we get. What we will be getting is that minus c 2 lambda n sin lambda n plus beta c 2 cosine lambda n is equal to 0. So, therefore, c 2 is in common. So, uh, beta cosine lambda n minus lambda n sin lambda n will be equal to 0. So, c 2 is equal to beta minus lambda n tan lambda n will be equal to 0. So, in order to have a non trivial solution c 2 must not be equal to 0. So, the only option is lambda n tan lambda n is equal to beta. So, lambda n are nothing but the eigen values of this transcendental equation roots of this transcendental equation equations are the eigen values. Now, this lambda n and tan, tan lambda n equal to beta, it will be it will be intersecting the lambda n axis at at n, n number of locations. So, if you if you really plot it, so uh, this will be there will be it will be cutting the x axis at infinite point and each of the intersection point is a root of this particular equation. This can be also solved numerically by using a Newton and Epsilon method. So, typically this type of equation the, um, the roots are appearing in an arithmetic progression of uh, common difference 3. So, one can take recourse to a Newton reduction and having an initial guess and then once that will be that will be um, uh, the Newton reduction for a particular initial guess is converged, then one can put a outer loop where the initial guess will be given an increment uh, plus 3 and the outer loop will be completed. So, if you uh, calculate this 4 times 1 will be automatically landing up with 4 roots of this governing equation. So, by by bring, by taking request to a numerical method one can really uh, obtain the you know first 5 roots or first 10 roots of this of this particular transcendental equation. So, once we get that then we will be formulating the time varying part T n is equal to C 3 exponential minus 
lambda n square t and u will be as a function of x n t will be nothing but n is equal to 1 to infinity c n exponential minus lambda n square t cosine lambda n x. Okay. Now, the constant c n has to be evaluated from the initial non zero initial condition that at t is equal to 0 u, a, u was equal to u naught. So, let us uh, go ahead with that if we really do it then we will be getting at t is equal to 0 u is equal to u naught and therefore, u naught will be is equal to summation c n cosine lambda n x where n is equal to from 1 to infinity. So, we ut utilize the orthogonal property of the of the Eigen functions. So, u 0, 0 to 1 cosine uh, lambda n x d x is equal to uh, c n cos square lambda n x d x. So, left hand side we will be getting u 0 sin lambda n divided by lambda n and the right hand side we are having c n by 2 0 to 1 to cos square lambda n x d x. So, uh, we can further simplify it sin lambda n by lambda n c n by 2 this can be written as 0 to 1 1 plus cosine 2 lambda n x d x. If that is the case then we can integrate it out on the right hand side and what we will be getting is c n by 2 is equal to 1 plus sin 2 lambda n x divided by 2 lambda n 0 to 1. So, you will be getting c n by 2 1 plus sin 2 lambda n divided by 2 lambda n. Now, we can put sin 2 lambda n in terms of we can express sin 2 lambda n in terms of tan lambda n and we have the equation lambda n tan lambda n is equal to beta and we can substitute that and we will be getting a simplified version of the of the coefficient c n. If you do that you will be getting u 0 sin lambda n divided by lambda n is equal to c n by 2 1 plus 1 over 2 lambda n is equal into 2 tan lambda n. We are substituting cos 2 lambda sin 2 lambda n by tan, tan lambda. So, 1 plus tan square lambda n. So, this will be c n by 2 1 plus this 2 will be cancelling out. So, it will be beta tan lambda n will be beta by lambda n that is the transcendental equation the um, eigenvalues must satisfied. So, beta by lambda n divided by 1 plus beta square by lambda n square. So, this becomes c n over 2 lambda n square plus beta square plus beta divided by lambda n square plus beta square and we can get the expression of c n as 2 u naught sin lambda n divided by lambda n multiplied by lambda n square plus beta square divided by lambda n square plus beta plus beta square. So, this is the uh, co constant and the complete solution is u is equal to summation n is equal to 1 to infinity c n exponential minus lambda n square t cosine lambda n x where n, n runs from 1 to infinity. So, that solves this problem completely. Now, now let us look into the uh, uh, some, some more problems. So, this completely solves up this problem. It is a we can call it a fourth kind, kind of boundary condition where the boundary at x is equal to 0 is um, uh, Neumann and boundary at x is equal to 1 is a Robin mixed. 
next I will be taking up one more example in order to um, uh, demonstrate the various types of solution using the separation of variable. The, so the problem that I will be talking about, it will be again a practical problem, where we will be having a uh, you know, um, uh, 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 Robin Weiss boundary condition. Uh, it is a heat con one dimensional heat con transient heat conduction problem. This will be alpha. So, this will be another example, example 3 let us say alpha del square t del x square at t is equal to 0, we have t is equal to t naught at x is equal to 0, we have t is equal to t 1 and at x is equal to l, we have a Robin mixed boundary condition k del t del x is equal to h t minus t infinity. That means, at this boundary it is open to atmosphere, whatever the amount of heat that has been transported here by conduction that will be taken away by convection, where h is the heat transfer coefficient and t infinity is the uh, you know uh, the, the, con the um, ambient, ambient temperature. Now, we make this equation non dimensional such that um, uh, one of the non homogeneity will go. So, extra will be x by l and theta the non dimensional temperature will be defined t minus t infinity divided by uh, t 0 minus t infinity. So, let us put it in the governing equation. So, this becomes del theta del t is equal to alpha del square theta divided by l square delta x star square. So, this will be nothing but del theta del tau is equal to delta square theta del x star square, where tau is equal to l square t over uh, over uh, over alpha uh, alpha t over l square. So, tau is equal to nothing, but so this will be l square will be on the other side. So, it will be alpha t over l square is the non dimensional time. Now, let us put in the boundary condition at tau is equal to 0 means at t is equal to 0 means at tau is equal to 0 theta is equal to theta naught minus t naught minus t infinity divided by t naught minus t infinity that will be equal to 1 at x star is equal to 0, uh, theta is equal to t minus t, t is equal to t 1. So, t 1 minus t infinity divided by t 0 minus t infinity. So, that will be let us say theta 1 and at x star is equal to 1, we have we have a mixed boundary condition. So, I think uh, you know, we will discuss it in detail. So, at x star is equal to 1, we have minus k by l this will be del x star and this will be del theta and that will be multiplied by t naught minus t infinity. So, this will be equal to h t minus t infinity. So, this will be um, uh, uh, so what is the definition of theta? Theta is equal to t minus t infinity divided by t naught minus t infinity. So, it will be t naught minus t infinity times theta. So, this will be cancelling out. So, what we will be getting is del theta del x star plus h l over k times theta and what is h l by k? It is called the biot number. It is a non dimensional number, it is a biot number, it is a ratio of heat transfer coefficient divided by thermal conductivity, it is ratio of the thermal resistance uh, by diffusion divided by thermal resistance by convection. So, uh, we will be having del theta del x star plus b i theta is equal to 0 at x star is equal to 1. So, in this particular problem, we have two sources of uh, non homogeneity. So, the non homogeneity uh, two sources of non homogeneity. So, let us look into what are the two sources. So, one is at initial condition at tau is equal to 0, theta is equal to 1, another is at the boundary condition at x, x is equal to 0, theta is equal to theta 1. So, I divide this problem, uh, uh, we, we, we call this as theta 1 naught in order to make it consistent. So, I divide this problem into two sub problem, one is theta 1, another is theta 2, considering one non homogeneity at a time as we have done earlier. So, therefore, theta 1 the sub problem 1 will be basically uh, del theta 1 del tau is equal to del square theta 1 del x star square at tau is equal to 0 theta 1 
is equal to uh, 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 we, we put it uh, put the boundary the in, uh, we, we, we keep the that non homogeneity intact and force the others to be vanish at tau is equal to 1 theta 1 equal to 1 and at x is equal to x star is equal to 0 theta 1 is equal to theta 1 naught and at x star is equal to 1 we have the mixed boundary condition del theta 1 del x star plus b i theta 1 is equal to 0. Now, this particular sub problem, this is a well post problem, well post partial differ parabolic partial differential equation and we have already solved in great detail how to solve this sub problem earlier. Now, let us look into the other sub problem, the other sub problem is for theta 2. So, it will be del theta 2 del tau is equal to del square theta 2 del x star square and at tau is equal to 0, we keep this initial condition to be homogeneous and uh, substitute the other one x star equal to 0, theta is equal to theta 1 naught and x star is equal to 1, we have the Robin mixed boundary condition del theta 2 del x star plus b i theta 2 is equal to 0. Now, again since we have a 0 initial condition, this problem has to be divided into two sub problems, one is the time dependent part, another is the time independent part. So, we can constitute the governing equation of theta 2 s, that is a time dependent independent part d square theta 2 s d x star square will be equal to 0 at x star is equal to 0, we have theta 2 s is equal to theta 1 naught, we associate the non homogeneous part with the steady state solution and x star is equal to 1 d theta 2 s d x star plus b i theta 2 s is equal to 0. Similarly, we formulate the other part, the transient parts, it will be del theta 2 t del tau is equal to del square theta 2 t del x star square at tau is equal to 0, theta 2 t will be nothing but minus theta 2 s x star, there is a steady state solution, solution of the steady state part and at x star is equal to 0. Since, we have associated the non homogeneous governed boundary condition with the steady state solution. So, theta 2 t will be become homogeneous and at x star 1 equal to 1, this becomes del theta 2 t del x star plus b i theta 2 t will be equal to 0. Now, again this is a old post problem of um, old post problem of third kind, where the eigen functions will be the sign functions and eigen value will be coming from the transcendental equation that we have already looked before. And this will be straightforward part, we will be getting the straightforward the solution of of the steady state part and solution of the steady state part will be substituted here and again it is a well post problem and we know the solution of this. So, the complete solution will be obtained as theta is equal to theta theta 1 plus theta 2 s which will be a function of x star only plus theta 2 t which will be solution of this part. So, we will be constituted in this way we will be construct the we can we will be able to construct the complete solution of this problem. So, I am also uh, um, uh, almost come to the end of my uh, uh, end of our course. So, in this course we have we have learned about the solution of partial differential equations for for that uh, for, for the engineering problems and we have already looked into the in detail the uh, how to form what are, what are the classifications of the uh, partial differential equations, they are uh, you know how to define, how to identify and define various boundary conditions, various partial differential equations, what is the, what is the uh, uh, principle of linear superposition. We have developed various theorems related to the standard eigenvalue problem adjoint operator and the properties of the standard eigenvalue problem which will be having a infinite I, you know number of eigenvalues and in and the eigen functions are orthogonal to each other various properties we have looked into. Then we have go we have looked into the solution of uh, you know um, uh, separation of uh, using separation of variable method for the rectangular coordinate we have defined different kinds of sub problems depending on the boundary conditions. For example, first kind, second kind, third kind and how to handle the 
how to divide the problems into sub problems in order to take care of non homogeneities in the boundary conditions. Then you have looked into the three types general solutions of the three types of partial differential equations um, uh, um, uh, that is parabolic, elliptical and hyperbolic. Then you have looked into the one two dimensional problem, three dimensional problem as well as the four dimensional problem and then we covered the uh, you know second dimension, two dimensional and three dimensional problems in cylindrical polar coordinate system as well as the spherical polar coordinate systems which the engineers will be will be coming across quite often. So, these course gives a basic fundamental background of, a, of, of the engineers how to tackle the you know uh, partial differential equations those will be appearing for different engineering applications and how to solve them using separation of variables if the operator is a linear operator. Now, in a in an actual case the operator may not be linear the problem may not be linear. So, one can take recourse to the numerical techniques which will be the time consuming as well as the computationally intensive, but as a first case one can go ahead with the with one can linearize the problem assuming the uh, you know um, uh, constant thermophysical and the transport coefficients and one can go ahead with the solution of the uh, separation using separation of variables as a as a first uh, for as a first and information of the complicated system. So, I hope this course will be useful to you for all the engineering students and particularly for um, uh, you know chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering students. Okay. Thank you very much.